Well, I work at the BBC and I work mainly with elections and virtual studios and working on the analysis of election results and mainly preparing for election night specials and things like that, although I do do campaign work as well. But my specialism is mainly VR, which is virtual reality, and augmented reality, which is an area we're moving into with our data visualisation. What does this mean for company like BBC to use these technologies? What are they good for? Well, I mean, they're good for making the story more accessible to the audience and making it more understandable. Everything we do is geared towards making the story clear, telling it in a concise way and making it easy to understand. What do you think can companies learn from an institution like BBC in regarding data visualization? Well, that's a tricky question. There's very many things they can learn from the way we do things. We can, I mean, we've made mistakes in the past and we are now hoping to do everything better. I mean, we have revaluated our situation since the late, I suppose, the 2008 was when things changed for us. And we changed our, our way of telling stories. We had used quite a light touch with politics Mm -hmm. And now we play with a much straighter bat, a much, much clearer game where the information is king and we don't play with it so much. Although that's not to say that that won't come back in. There is a tradition of, uh, tradition of cartoon and of satire within uh, the UK press and to some extent we, we tap it, had tapped into that in the past. Mm -hmm. But for the moment we're fighting shy of that. When, when you say you do storytelling with data visualisation, what do you mean? Well, every election is a story. It, I mean, there's, there, there's a start, there's opinion polls, there's a journey that the electorate go on that finishes with on election night. So that's the, really the story that we're trying, trying to tell as much as anything else. Uh, and how things play in the campaign as well is very important. So that, that taps into that. But it, everything's narrative in, at the moment in the way we do things now that is changing because we're talking about whether we allow a lot more access for our audience to our sources and the data and mm. how we approach that and that's something I'll expand on at some, can expand on at some length but it's work mm. that we're currently doing. So you've been working quite a while on these topics, what, what would you say are the, the key criteria, if you would have to name some, uh, which you really have to be aware of when you think about, you know, uh, to visualize complex data? Clarity. Decide what it is that you want people to walk away from it. I mean that's the absolute key thing. There is no other, no other, no other thing. Uh, having said that, I mean I'm, I'm, I'm a bit of a poacher and a gamekeeper because I do like intriguing graphics, I like things that are interactive, I like things that look beautiful. Mm. And sometimes it's very easy to get sidetracked by that, and I know I have, have been in the past, but our key goal and the thing we come back to is does it tell the story, does it get the information to where it needs to be. Mm. How do you get your feedback? When are you satisfied? When do you say people got our story? Well, there's a number of sources. On the night uh, there is a <laughs> It's a tad unprofessional, really, but there's a, there's a forum for TV news forum, and on the night, if things are going well, I have nothing to do, so I'm in the gallery and I'm looking to see what other people in the industry are, are blogging about us. Okay. And then in the mornings, it's the the coverage is in the papers, and we we read that and we can yeah. tell generally tell from, tell from that. But I mean, one of the one of the things that's happened recently is. It used to be you could broadcast something and forget about it, but now everything's captured and if you step out of line or make a mistake, you'll see it on YouTube and yeah. the comments there will give you a very clear idea yeah. when things have gone, well, mainly they'll give you a clear idea when things have gone wrong. Yeah. Uh, what are the major challenges when you have to deal with uh, virtual re reality, augmented reality in, in uh, in, in such life events and also, you know, regarding costs and what is... Well, I mean, it is, it is expensive. Good camera tracking is always expensive and to make believable virtual and augmented reality you have to track your cameras very, very accurately. 
that I mean that that's one thing but the other key thing is making sure your data is all in sync that the the information you're getting and putting on screen within your VR systems and there's always a slight lag with those those systems because they're quite complex is in tune with the, the tally that's on the bottom of the screen and mm. on the website and so that everything clicks over at the same time I mean covering American events is always more difficult because the networks there tend to call the uh, call estate uh, whereas mm -hmm. here we have a returning officer so although we can hear a rumour that a certain seat has gone one way or another mm -hmm. we generally won't count it until the returning officer has stood up and given that number the number that's big enough to, to win the seat and then it drops onto our system and becomes live for us mm -hmm. so keeping everything in sync I mean that's kind of the minutiae of uh, minutia mm -hmm. of the business really how would you describe the data visualization market? <laughs> status quo? Well, I, I think there's a lot of experimentation going on. And I mean, some of that to me seems closer to art than to, than, than to science. And whether it is aiding understanding or, or, or not, I don't know. But I, just there's fabulous stuff to look at out there. I was looking at a thing in the FT recently about, um, I, think it was about I think it was about football salaries. But it was very hard to remember what, what it was about. It looked stunning though. I mean, the guy that produced the work, it's beautiful work. It belongs big and in a gallery, you know. Mm, it's mm. Maybe not, maybe not in a newspaper. <laughs> yeah, but the market in numbers, is it a growing market? What do you, what do you? Oh, I think yeah. it's growing and I think the demand's going up. I think the, the expectation now is for people to see numbers and data presented them to it a number of different ways and to be able to interact with it more. I mean this is a, again a debate we're having internally with the BBC is how much do we actually put out, out there for the audience and how yeah. much do we use ourselves. Yeah. That balance is, is, a, is a crucial thing for the future. Yeah. So if you would have to give advice to companies because this is the audience we are facing yeah. at Peter's yeah. back, uh, what would you tell them? What would they, you know, by if they start thinking about visualization of their data things, well, I'm, I'm, I think they should test test their ideas and test their perceptions with with the, with their audiences. So it's it's one thing having a brilliant idea that's going to look great and interact well, and and that you feel may take you to the data that people are going to want, but you need to test it. I mean, always test, 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 is what, I, what I'd say on that one. The benefits of data visualization, what are they? Well, I mean, the, the benefits are it's very engaging. I mean, I do think that beautifully presented work that's clear and easy to understand does, does draw people in. So it's, it's, it's seductive, you want to use it, you want to work with it, it helps you get to what you want. But, I mean, and aside from that, just just looking nice, it can really aid aid understanding. I mean, the the example I always talk about is Florence Nightingale's polar distribution charts of mortality in the Crimea. I mean, they changed British public policy in terms of health, and they look incredibly interesting and fascinating. And they really did. They worked with the with the legislature. Yeah. When we talk about these things, it always sounds very costly. <laughs> uh, at least it sounds. I mean, uh, if if a company is thinking about data vis visualization, they of course have to look at the costs as well. Well, it doesn't. I mean, it doesn't have to be. It doesn't have to be expensive. There are a number of packages. It's not about packages. It's it's about the people and thinking through how you present the work and how you show the ideas and you can do good data visualization with very very simple tools I mean processing which is a tool that I'm getting into using at the moment mm -hmm. is a you know, free download from Ben Fry and you can work with that and that's great you can produce stunning images I mean I'm I like using it almost as a drawing tool rather than a data visualization tool yeah so what can people expect from you when you come to pay us back? What will you tell them? Give us a short idea. Well, I'll, I'll show you why we are where we are with our current work at the BBC. I'll show you um, some of our more recent award-winning work and I'll show you some of the earlier 
things that got us there. But I'll also, I think, look more at this relationship between data visualization, um, between infographics, and the one person stood up telling the telling story, which for us is a correspondent, but can just as easily be somebody um, delivering, delivering a PowerPoint. I mean, it, it, these things apply right across the board. And mm. we can see there's a clear path from the, from the broad research that goes in and the visualization of, of that data to understand the story better into a sort of fact-rich web experience. Um, and then finally down to somebody telling you the three salient points about the subject. So that it's that path that I'm looking at at the moment. Mm. Well, I mean, I, I think a good example would be um, the, the way the, Guard, the Guardian presents data. I mean, but I mean, they're in an interesting bind at the moment because recent, recently one of their senior staff, Alan Rushbridger. Alan Rushbridger. Yeah, Alan Rushbridger. I can never get that name quite right. He was saying that they needed less journalists and more, more developers that had journalistic skills for precisely the reasons of wanting to get more you know, more visualisation there, more, you know, more of that, that, that kind of work. And I think that there's going to be a big blurring between TV and newspapers. And this is one of the areas with IPTV where we're going to cross into each other's, <laughs> clearly into each other's territory. We're already there yeah. and it's going to become more and more obvious. I mean, we have a similar situation in that we do need more, more developers. I mean, same as Guardian, we're all chasing the same pool of people. Is it hard to find the people? Yes. Why is it so hard? Because there is no way to educate them that we, have, we don't have. Well, it, it was interesting. I was talking to a second year um, arts and design student yesterday from the University of Westminster. And he was saying that it's just in their second year they start looking at coding as a creative process. So. That's and, very interesting. Coding yeah. as a creative process. Well, I think that's where I think that's where we're going. I mean, very much so. It's one of the new things that's coming into it. So, we're looking for a combination of skills. We're looking for people that are visually aware, that can code, that can also have a sense of news and how to what mm. what constitutes a story. I mean, these are these are difficult times to find those those type of people. Yeah, who is leading this race today? Well, I think that, I mean, the New York Times always wins everything in terms of the data visualization yeah. um, stakes. They, they're, they're very good. On the TV side, I mean, we have been just doing set pieces and, and we do okay with those on the awards, awards front. But really, we want to get more of that into our daily, daily programs. So okay. that's, that's our plan and that's what I'm working on is getting that so it's part of you know, part of part of the news, part of our bulletins, yeah. is augmented, and it's not just kept for special occasions. What what kind of role does interactivity play? Ah, well, um, I mean, I think for the for the audience, <coughs> we 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 have a problem because on the television side, we expect we'd like our audience to stay focused and looking at the TV and enjoying that experience, and that brings everything to them. But the research shows more and more people have a tablet have a laptop there, have a smartphone, and sometimes they're looking at related things. So we need content that is engaging but related. Mm -hmm. So this, this, this relationship, and this is where the IPTV thing comes in. I mean, I'm, I think very much of uh, the Robocop film, the, the ads in there, there's these lovely little ads which is, the voice voiceover says, do you want to know more? And I actually think we, we are now heading to that world. Mm. Yeah, so. Three points. What makes a good visualization a good one, a real good one? <laughs> Does your audience take away what you want them to know from it? So it, it's the message. Get the message right, get the data across, and, and you're there.